Testing. Here we go. We are looking good here. Ooh, man. Hey everyone, Adam here with TLA, and thanks for coming back after the holiday hiatus. It's now February, and I know that like me, many of you probably took some well-deserved time off, and if that break included time off from the gym, you likely have experienced or will experience some muscle soreness as you start to get back to work. So today, I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk about delayed onset muscle soreness, or DOMS what causes it, what it means for your body, and what, if anything, you can do about it. When I first started exercising regularly, I thought that having sore muscles meant that I got a great workout, and the more sore that I was, the more growth I would see. I thought if my body wasn't sore, I hadn't worked out hard enough, and I'd wasted my time in the gym. No pain, no gain, right? Well, it turns out that that old trope in regards to muscle soreness couldn't be further from the truth. Scientists used to think that delayed onset muscle soreness was caused by a buildup of lactic acid in the blood after a workout. Well, recent research has shown that that's actually not at all what causes muscles to be sore. So the next time you hear someone in the gym talk about how the lactic acid is causing their soreness, it's okay to kindly tell them in a non-patronizing way that that's not true! So get your facts straight. Your muscles don't even produce lactic acid. Now they do produce a similar compound called lactate, but lactate is cleared from your muscles really quickly, and so it really doesn't play any role in your lingering soreness. So what does? Well, science can't really answer that question conclusively yet. But as best we understand it, exercise causes little micro tears in your muscle tissue, which heightens your sense of pain, and that trauma that you've suffered triggers inflammation in your body. And that's just your body's natural way of recovering as it repairs itself. Even though we don't know the exact mechanism behind DOMS, we do know what types of movements cause it. There are two types of muscle contractions, concentric and eccentric. Muscle soreness, interestingly enough, is only caused by the eccentric, or the lengthening part, of an exercise. If you've ever heard the term negatives, that's an eccentric motion. Other eccentric movements include things like the lowering part of a pull-up or a bicep curl or the downward motion of a push-up or a squat. Any of these things can leave your body sore. On the other hand, concentric movements like cycling or pushing a sled won't leave you sore no matter how hard you work because they don't have an eccentric component. Side note, this is why I often like to use concentric based movements like cycling, like sleds, like medicine ball slams as conditioning exercises in my weight loss programs because they help you increase your overall fitness and your muscular endurance, but they're not gonna leave you feeling so sore that they're gonna get in the way of your weightlifting workouts. So you can kind of sprinkle them in here and there to burn a few extra calories without making a big dent in your strength or muscle gain. So since we know what causes DOMS, we can pretty definitively rule it out as being an accurate indicator of how hard your workout was. All it really does is tell us that you've done some amount of eccentric exercise that your body just wasn't used to. Now, any barbell exercise worth its weight in iron will have an eccentric part of the movement, so it's natural to get sore. And if your training is productive, it will sometimes leave you feeling that way. That's all right. But it's important to remember that the soreness itself isn't what's making you stronger. It's just a side effect that you get from training. Progressively increasing the load as your body adapts to it over time is what makes you stronger. Soreness can mean that you did a hard workout, but a hard workout won't necessarily leave you sore. There's a subtle but important distinction there to remember. So muscle soreness doesn't help make you stronger, but does it help with muscle growth? Well, there's a few obvious things I wanna look at first. One. You usually get the most sore when you first start to work out, but you won't see actual growth until weeks or months later when you're no longer getting sore. So is that growth from the soreness that you experienced your first week? Probably not. Two, some muscle groups very rarely get sore, but they grow just fine, like your deltoids. Contrarily, your abs can get extremely sore, but they really don't grow much at all. Three, people who train very infrequently often get the worst DOMS, but many of them don't see any noticeable growth. And four, people who train more frequently get less DOMS, but often see more growth. 
Let's look a bit deeper and explore the three primary drivers of muscle gain. Number one, progressive overload. That means using load or volume to increase levels of tension in the muscle. Number two, metabolic stress or repeated repetitions to muscle failure. And number three, muscle damage. That's actual damage caused to the muscle fibers from high levels of tension. Any one of these processes or any combination of them can drive muscle growth, but muscle damage is the one we want to look at here. Research has shown that it does contribute to muscle growth. Let's be clear, muscle damage isn't a requirement for muscle growth, but it does have some effect on it. So high degrees of damage from time to time can be helpful, but there's no real way to measure or quantify the effect any muscle soreness is having on your growth or repair. So, in other words, a high or low amount of muscle soreness doesn't accurately correlate with a high or low amount of muscle damage or muscle growth. Anyone who trains understands that as you continue to challenge yourself and as you continue to get stronger, you're definitely gonna experience some mild to moderate soreness. It's common and it's generally harmless. It's, it's just the kind that makes you say, oh, oh boy, yeah, I'm feeling that in my chest today. Whew. It's completely safe to work through that kind of soreness. What you don't want is the excruciating, debilitating kind that prevents you from using your legs correctly. Everyone, conference room, now. All right, easy there, Grandpa. Okay, I don't need your help. Okay, you don't need your help? Here, just... Spending every workout pushing until you're limping out of the gym will compromise your ability to train effectively in your follow-up workouts, and it can prevent you from training often enough to even see the changes you're looking for. I remember several years ago, before I knew any better, I let a personal trainer at my local gym who I thought knew what he was doing put me through one of his leg days. This guy outweighed me by 60 pounds and looked like a pro bodybuilder, but here I was, skinny fat Adam, barely graduating from baby's first weights, getting put through the same workout as this guy? He should have known that I was nowhere near ready for something like that. And after a grueling workout, I spent an entire week in agonizing pain, barely able to even stand up out of my car because my hamstrings couldn't extend and my calves didn't want to flex. How are you supposed to train effectively after that? Still, a lot of people in the fitness community believe that getting sore is a good thing and it should be the primary goal of your exercise. They're proud to brag about how they couldn't climb the stairs or sit on the toilet that morning. They wear their soreness like a badge of honor, but muscle soreness does not equal progress. It's a necessary evil sometimes, but it shouldn't be the main goal of your training. Don't worry if your workouts don't make you sore. You'll know you're progressing and getting more fit if your performance gets better. Now, as far as getting rid of that muscle soreness, well, science hasn't exactly found an answer for that either. There was a huge study in 2011 that found that stretching before or after exercising does not reduce DOMS. Massages, foam rolling, hot showers, ice baths, plenty of people use and swear by these things, but there just really isn't that much supporting evidence that they actually work to reduce your soreness. Pain relievers like ibuprofen can help reduce inflammation and pain for a little while, but the effects of the medication is not gonna last as long as the soreness does. I say if you find something that works for you, then do it. There's no harm in doing what feels good for you. Your soreness will usually peak a day or two after the event, and then depending on the damage, it's gonna start to subside a few days later. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to the channel, make sure you click the subscribe button for more content like this. Remember to train hard, eat right, and fully recover. I'll see you next time. Mm, 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 mm. No pain, no gain. Perfect. <laughs> By a buildup of lactic acid, 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 ha ha ha, oh, oh, oh. massages, hot rolling, hot rolling, <laughs> what's hot rolling? Ha 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 ha.